Cheyenne, baby, that man don't want you. He done moved on. Ladies, let this be an example of how we not going to have these men have us looking out here in these streets. It ain't a good look, lady. It ain't a good look. No. <laughs>
not only Kiyomi, the woman that he walked in with, and y'all, they was walking in some matching outfits, you know what I'm saying? That matching outfit, that say a lot, you know what I'm saying? That say a whole, whole, no, whole lot. I was like, oh, goddamn, that's some sort of shit. And then there was an all white, like, godly and all that. I was like, oh, gosh, okay. So, but she just felt hurt, you know what I'm saying? She's like, how this fool gonna do this to me? She starts breaking down crying. Scrap De Leon, he's like a good big brother, telling her to, you know, stop crying. He's wiping her face, whoop de whoop yada, 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 right? In the meantime, you got Shooter and Kiyomi, they outside. Kiyomi's like, okay, if you got these girls in check, they supposed to know about me. Why is she up here tripping like that? Shooter like, damn all that. She said something I didn't like. What's she talking about? You coming on up out of Scrap House with an overnight bag, tell me about like let, let me hear about that she claims that scrap de leon is supposed to be helping her with her music child they show a never before before seen footage where her and scrap are in the studio mama got her whole hand y'all hear that slap like that on the man thigh trying to get on up there by the magic stick and all of that then she gonna have nerd tell the fool she got a crush on him she tells a shooter she didn't feel like that was important that was anything to tell him so she didn't say anything to him about her and um scrap being in the studio which it is something to me it looked like it was something i mean scrap that y'all i mean he ain't bad looking you know what i'm saying he throwing that thing around like he was throwing it around i'm just saying i ain't saying for me i'm saying for a friend i'm just saying you know what i'm saying but uh shooter was like look here i'm riding with you regardless of what it is you know what i'm saying i just need to know what the hell is going on kiyomi claims that her and scrap didn't mess around but scrap he did kind of say you know what i'm saying atlanta is small and he messing with her wait come on now Real recognized, real game recognized game. The way he said that was like, oh, yeah, she done smashed the homie before. It is what it is. It is what it is. Y'all, Sierra and um, Carly Red share this cute little moment or whatever, right? They basically forgive each other. Sierra more or less needs to forgive Carly for everything that she's done. Carly's like, look here, my biggest thing with you is that I felt like you have not been the friend to me that I have been to you. When I needed you to be there for me, it was always about you, you, you. Sierra does recognize where she's gone wrong as a friend, and so she does make the vow that she wants to get better as a friend and that she doesn't want to you know what I'm saying? Have any beef, bad blood between them. Now, Carly wants her friend back, but as well, like she says, bitch, you holler up and you mush the hell out of me in my face. So we're going to take this thing a couple of baby steps, which I don't blame you, Carly. I don't blame you not one bit for that. Little behind the scenes on that. Um, So I was on Instagram. No, I was on Instagram. I was on YouTube, but I seen, I guess, Kiyomi and... um. Carly Red were on a live together and Carly Red was upset because she didn't feel like Sierra's genuine um, her uh, apology was genuine I don't know if you guys seen that on Sierra's Instagram she had put up this apology a public apology to Carly Red she felt like she needed to give a public apology well Carly Red was like you could have just reached out to me this is what her and Kiyomi were talking about on this live that I had seen on YouTube right if I can find a link to that I'll put that down, to, uh, down below but she was just basically like telling Kiyomi if she was real and true and genuine about about it she could have called me she didn't call me so i don't know what to think about that apology i don't know if it's real so i don't know if they're friends right now or not but they seem to have made up for the time being and that's good for them so they can go on and get get that check i ain't even mad at them get your money girl so the ladies are all on the bus. They're getting ready to go skiing, right? Mimi brings up, you know, hey, Carly and Sierra, I seen y'all over there. Y'all look like y'all was in deep conversation. What was going on? So um, Sierra says, you know, her and Carly, you know, they talked about things. They're working on things. And so they hoping to get better. She kind of then asked, you know, well, what was going on? What did y'all feel like the problem was? Sierra was like, I just felt like it was more on me. And it was some things that I need to work on. She kind of simply asked, well, why do you feel like it was all on you? What do you need to work on? Sierra then says it was just some things I feel like I need to work on that was between me and Carly and I don't want to talk to you about it now on both hands I can understand where Sierra was coming from it was a conversation between her and Carly Red she didn't feel like she needed to tell her she didn't tell nobody else on the bus and she so she didn't want to do that however at the same time the way you came off and said it was rude as hell and I don't blame Shekinah not one bit for getting mad and snapping right back on your ass because I just stepped right back on your ass but then again at the same time I wouldn't have pride and asked all them questions because that ain't my business I got it from the first time you said, you know, it was just something between y'all that y'all got to work out. So 
After that, of course, she kind of got offended as hell. She was like, God damn. First, it's Spice. Then it's Carly. Now it's your goddamn ass. Like, y'all steady snapping on me. I'm getting sick and tired of that. Now, Sierra was like, look here. Don't take it there. That's not how I meant it. This is just how I said it. I didn't mean for it to come off like that. You know, whoop de whoop yada, yada, yada. Child, they start to get into it. As they're getting going back and forth, Carly jumps in. Then Spice is huffing and puffing because she's irritated with the whole back and forth that's going on you got bambi in the middle she crying because y'all know the girl just found out she pregnant so she emotional she going through shit she just ain't got time for this shit so she on there crying going girl just crying like a pregnant woman bless her dog on heart she didn't know what else to do but cry so after she's crying spice and shikana then starts going back and forth i don't blame i was i would have got irritated on that dog on bus too spice is ready to go she's ready to get off shikana's like pull the bus over i need to go and smoke me a cigarette i need to smoke on me a joint real quick because i just can't handle this try to get off the bus spice and shikana is still going back and forth because shikana's like you snapping on me too i don't know what the hell i did to you Chai, it is so doggone funny. Spice is like, you want me to fight me? You want to fight me? Come on, man, fight me. Chai, she tries to go off. She kind of, she kind of got look at bitch. I done had too many surgeries. I'm not going to be running around here trying to get away from your Jamaican ass because you try to fight me. Sit on down somewhere. It was pissing Spice off, but it was funny as hell. I thought it was funny as hell. Hopefully, they they found some humor in it because you can see Carly and Bambi and see it. They were laughing because it was funny as hell. It was funny as hell. I'd like to see him go at it too, child. But then again, we done seen when she kind of done got knocked over before, child. She rolled back. <laughs> So y'all, we got Kiyomi and Erica meeting up just to have like brunch or girl talk, or whatever, right? Erica says that her and Kiyomi both have a shared interest, which of, uh, which of course we already know they both mess around with La Bow Wow. So child, Erica alludes to the fact that her and Kiyomi have a lot in common because she understands her. She was in her shoes before. So basically, basically she's low key saying without saying that Bow Wow probably done put hands on her as well. I don't know. Yeah, it is what it is. But um, she does tell Kiyomi that her and Sierra are good friends. Now, she tells Kiyomi that she feels like her and Sierra maybe need to talk because maybe they can get a better understanding of Shooter because, like she said, she don't understand why Homegirl was pissed off at her if her and Shooter's supposed to have this open relationship and Homegirl is supposed to know her and know who the hell she is. It's a child. That's just dumb to me. Any female know you opening up Pandora's box when you have this quote-unquote open relationship. If you ain't really ready for no open relationship, don't open it, girl. Keep it closed. Y'all, so the ladies are on the bus. They're um, at the end of the day after they've gone skiing. Mimi got this other surprise uh, surprise plan where they end up going on this big-ass Ferris wheel. Right now, look here. I am deathly afraid of heights, but I will go flying and I'll get on some hot shit, but I'm still afraid of heights. So I don't blame uh, Carly and C, uh, what was that, Spice when they were scared of baby. I just, ooh, and Ferris wheels, no. It's just something about that, baby. I can't do that because if I get stuck, who gonna get me down? Because I'm not climbing my goddamn big ass down. Somebody gonna come goddamn get me. That's just what it is. So child, Mimi purposely put Spice and Shekinah on one of the crates on the Ferris wheel so they could talk it out. Spice is scared of hella heights. Child, long story short, they're on there. They end up making up the whole reason why Spice was uh, pissed off because she flew all the way from Jamaica to doggone Atlanta to look at houses and Shekinah didn't answer the phone. Shekinah does realize that she was wrong. She should have answered the phone. Now look here, I got a better understanding after that because at first I thought it was just real childish why they were going back and forth, but now I see. But And I don't blame Spice for being mad at herself. Me not gonna get on the plane, come all the way from, from Jamaica, come to Atlanta and you don't, I don't blame her. I would have been mad as hell too, but Shekinah does promise once, if they make it back down on the ground, that was funny as hell. If they make it back, that she will take her back to Atlanta and they will find some houses. They was able to get over. That's all you could have did in the first place, girl. But y'all had to do something to record for TV. I get it. I know. I get it. It is. It is what it is. So the ladies are in this um, hot spring chilling. I've always wanted to get in a hot spring. We got in one at Great Wolf Law. It wasn't even a real hot spring. I want to go to Colorado and get in a real, or Gatlinburg, Tennessee, where they at and get in a real hot spring. Oh, it just look good on the body. So anyways, 
They in this little hot spring, whatever. And Sierra gets a call from Tiffany Fox. Y'all might remember her. She was on a couple of past episodes of Love and Hip Hop. One of Stevie J's artists. Anyways, she gets a call from Tiffany Fox and her homegirl said that BK and her dude were in a bar with um, a bunch of females and one of the females is rubbing on his beard and sitting on his lap. Sierra ends up calling Romel. That's BK name, y'all. Romel. Romel, what are you doing? Why my homegirl said you with a light girl? Why she rubbing on your bitch? See, you messy. You do too much. You talk too much. Child, she mad. Romel out here with all these doggone bitches. She tells him that's the whole reason why she was crying in the first doggone place, that she don't want to be pregnant by him because he's steady out here doing whatever he want to do whenever the hell he want to do it. And so she's sick and tired of him and she ain't going to deal with him no more. Y'all, which we already know that, um, oh, and that's another thing she said, child. She said she found his phone. Turns out this dude got a whole nother secret Instagram account where he's following two of his ex-females. So you got a whole nother secret life that you out here doing on social media. That damn social media. Hmm. It's been ruining marriages since 2000, y'all. Lord, 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 Lord. So he got a whole nother life he living. So that's why she says, you know, she was crying because she don't want to be with him. But child, they still together. Go to their Instagram. They still together. Girl, stop saying what you're going to do if you ain't going to do it. Like the old folks say, let a man show you who he is once. Come on now. If, if, if you're really forgiven twice. But three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So come on now, girl. Come on, girl. So Kiyomi and Shooter are in a car getting ready to go meet up with Scrap Delion and Cheyenne, right? Now, while Shooter and Kiyomi are in the car, Kiyomi's like, look here, you need to tell this female who I am. She needs to know that I'm the bottom bitch. I'm the heavy I see, and that's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? Why would you even want to be with her? This who you want to procreate with? This who you want to have kids with? He gonna tell her, hell no. You gonna be the one to do that. She was like, okay, well then, you're going to have to tell her, let her something know. Now, I don't know if I'm just old school broad or what it is. You ain't worried about trying to be the one and only in this man's life and then his wife before you have his kids? I don't know. That's just that old school bone in my body. Y'all, Lord, forgive me for that. Just forgive me for that. So, child, they end up getting together and meeting up, right? Now, Shooter asked. Cheyenne, what do you think happened when you left for those five, six months? It was a no call, no show. You said you didn't want to be bothered. You told me not to call you, not to bother you, none of that. You can't go from your job and leave for four or five or six months, no call and no show, and not think something is going to happen. Your position has been filled. I did say, okay, that's, that's some smooth nigga shit right there. That's smooth as hell. I'm sorry to tell him your position has been filled. I said, okay, it is what it is. Now, she did call Kiyomi out. She was like, look here, you left my brother house. So, you messing with my brother. So, what is you doing? Kiyomi tries to turn to Scrap and like, look here, Scrap, did we mess around? Did what it is. It looked like she was like, please don't say it. Please don't say it. Scrap was like, look here. What happened between me and you is what happened between me and you. Right there is between all of y'all. I ain't got nothing to do with that. Cheyenne is like, look here, shooter. You had you you done told me you love me. You done had me around your kids. That's what it was to trigger Kiyomi. Because once again, Kiyomi was cool, calm, and collected because she claimed she didn't want the girl to see her sweat. Soon as Cheyenne done said, you done had me around your kids. That's when it got Kiyomi pissed off. She's like, oh, word up. So I ain't the only HBICHD. And it's, it's, a, it's a couple of us there. Like, what the hell is going on? She's like, look here, calm down. We're not finna do this. We're not finna go back and forth. So once again, Shooter turns to Cheyenne. It's like, look here, what is we gonna do? Because she gonna be cool with whatever I do. So what is you gonna do? I'm like, Cheyenne. If this man ain't telling you in I don't know how many different languages smacking y'all across your face that he ain't no doggone good. He ain't no, ain't never been and ain't never go. I'm just saying, come on now, sus. So once again, Kiyomi comes out, her and Cheyenne go at it. They getting ready to fight and the episode ends for now, y'all. 
this episode was good. I will say this episode was good. But, um, Cheyenne, girl, you are too beautiful. You too beautiful. My grandma used to say, beautiful. You are too beautiful to let this man have you out here looking like a whole damn fool when you got a whole lot of businesses. I'm just saying, don't do it, sis. Don't do it. Don't do it. Y'all, but look here. That was the end of the episode right there. Y'all already know if there was anything that I missed. Drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And your Auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. Elbow bump. <laughs>